dear all namaste today i am going to discuss on gradin nigos syndrome also called as acute petrositis or apex petrositis or petrous epicytis this is defined as involvement of the petrous apex air cells in chronic otitis media the infection from the middle ear by some virtue reaches the petrous apex cells leading to the inflammation and abscess formation there the petrous apex cells are nematized in 20% of cases only therefore there is 20% chance of inflammation of the petrous apex but that is very rare condition why is this topic important this is important because the condition is difficult to manage due to poor drainage of the secretions and proximity of petrous apex to the neurovascular structures fifth nerve sixth nerve internal carotid artery all lie near to it how does the infection spread from middle ear to the petrous apex via nematized ear cell tracts through vascular channels like periarterial spaces of virsa robins and occasionally direct extension through the facial planes how does the patient present what are the clinical presentations This is commonly remembered as Gradnigo's triad. This is defined as persistent ear discharge in spite of adequate cortical master surgery. What is adequate? Adequate means if we do complete master surgery, but we don't touch the petrous apex cells because they are not in the territory of the simple cortical master surgery. So our surgery would be unable. to remove those cells which will still discharge after surgery also second is retroorbital pain due to fifth cranial lobe involvement the fifth cranial lobe lies in relation to the petrous apex in meckel's cave so it might be compressed leading to the retroorbital pain the third one is medial squint due to abduction nerve involvement again Abduction nerve is also in relation to the petrous apex, so if it is damaged, there will be an opposed action of the medial rectus muscle, so the eye will be pulled medially, leading to medial squint. We can see here the relationship between the petrous apex ear cells and the different structures. This is the fifth nerve, this is the sixth nerve, and this is the internal carotid artery. what are the possible sequelae of gradnigo syndrome if untreated the infection might lead to meningitis or intracranial abscess formation the infection may spread to skull base leading to involvement of the 9th 10th 11th cranial nerves so called bonnet syndrome the infection might spread to periorbital or paraphyngeal spaces leading to paraphyngeal space abscess formation and the infection even spread to the sympathetic plexus around the carotid sheath so by knowing all the problems caused by gradnigo syndrome how to treat the condition if it is simple inflammation it is treated by iv antibiotics broad spectrum high dose iv antibiotics and anti inflammatory agents for inflammation surgical treatment depends upon the pattern of residual hearing if there is no residual hearing that is if the patient complains of sensory hearing loss then we can either approach through translabyrinthine route or through the transcochlear route translabyrinthine route is approached for the posterior cells and transcochlear route is performed for the anterior cells when the patient has a residual hearing or when the hearing is near normal then we can opt for retrolabyrinthine approach or subarcuate approach for the posterior cells and intracochlear or subtemporal approach for the anterior cells our aim here will be to preserve the residual hearing so that patient won't lose their hearing pattern and nowadays we can approach the petrous apex through endoscopic approach also the endoscopic approach starts from the nose to the skull base and from the skull base we will go towards the petrous apex thank you thank you so much